morning, Zoe family, and to all our listeners uh, around the world. We're, we're happy to be with you. Obviously, we're in a different context today uh, that we thought would be appropriate, actually, just to really just sit down and talk to you. Uh, a little while ago, we solicited questions from the congregation in terms of what was on their minds about past sermons or even what's going on in the world. And Bishop and I thought we would sit down and just have a conversation ab about it. And certainly you've been hearing from me for the last several weeks. Uh, many of you would like to know kind of what's on Bishop's mind as well. And so, uh, and for those of you here with, the, here for, with us for the first time, uh, Bishop Ed is my father. He's the founding pastor. And uh, he, you can hear him regularly on at Wednesday at noon. Um, but he's been imparting to our church far more beyond that. And so this is an opportunity to really to really get that. So um, pleased to have my father here. Uh, happy to, uh, to, to, to just share the platform with him today. And uh, I, I have some things I will address right away. But before that, I just want to give Bishop a chance to greet you and, and to uh, just share his joy for being here with us today. Well, I want to say welcome today. And I want to encourage you to uh, be hopeful. And what we'll share today, I believe, will be helpful and be encouraged. So we tried to take the questions and put them around themes and to, to get a sense of the best way to respond to them. And so the, first, the theme that we're going to address today is this question of peace. Mm -hmm. And the big question is, how do we find peace in a world that is filled with conflict, uncertainty, tragedy, and discouragement? So uh, the, the first thing we'll do, actually, I'm going to ask Bishop some questions specifically, some of them related to things you've asked. But the first thing I'm going to do is address some practical ones. And many, many of you had questions just about one thing that will give you peace is knowing how Zoe is going to move forward, the reopening, the vaccines and all that kind of stuff. So what I can share with you, and we've shared this in recent months, that is to say that we anticipate if things continue the direction that they're going in terms of the rate of the vaccinations and various other institutions taking steps toward reopening, we anticipate that we'll be making some movement toward reopening this year. And we are currently talking with our leaders and our, and we have a specific team assigned to look at reopening. We'll be working on that to institute a plan to do that. We're really excited about it. So keep praying for us about that, but we do anticipate that, we'll, that more details will follow. Uh, but anticipate this year for us to make some announcement towards some movement toward reopening. So that's the first thing. The second practical issue has to do with vaccines. And, you know, that is a touchy issue, we know, uh, in large part because there's so many opinions about it. There's a lot of politics about it. And then there's the kind of medical imperatives about it. And many of we all know people who've been affected by coronavirus, either who have contracted it, whether it be us ourselves or people who have passed away from it. So, you know, our posture, you know, from the beginning has been that we are taking the more cautious route. And this is why we've been closed. And not just because of that, because we've 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 respected the 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 what, what the state has required of us in California. We know that other states have different kind of requirements. And so because of that, we've we've honored that. But with respect to the vaccine, we we recognize that there are different positions. There are some people who are early adopters and they, they say, where's the vaccine? Let me take it now. And others of you decide, let me sort of like wait and see. And other people have hostile attitudes. So uh, I'll say for myself uh, that for me, I, I, I will be taking the vaccine and, and I'll tell you why, mainly because I'm gonna have so much interaction with people. Uh, I just think I, I, it would be a disservice for me to uh, not be available to preach because I have to quarantine or because uh, someone I've been affected by someone. Um, so I, I'm going to do that. And my own posture is I'm going to pray over the vaccine the way it's the same way I pray not to get infected by Corona. Um, you, it's up to you with respect to what you decide to do. The reality is, is that many people can't get the vaccine now anyway. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I, I'm not a, a eligible to get it right now, even though I'm also a, a teacher. So, uh, so, you know, I think we'll just have to make those decisions as they come. The, the reality is, is that we've got to trust God, regardless of the situation that we're in, and make wise choices regarding that. So bottom line is we're looking forward to having a making steps towards reopening. So we'll address those practical questions on the front end. That said, we've got many more other questions that are, that are not tied to the reopening, but are tied to how we live in this world. And so I, I want to take it to, to Bishop. Uh, I've, uh, the questions I've gotten are several. 
ranging from people are have unrest about politics. And the one people, there are people who think that one party is more Christian than the other. And so <laughs> how am I to look at that? Uh, how am I to look at the way our government is addressing our Christian values? Uh, some people have questions about the end times. Uh, some people have questions about, well, how do I represent my Christianity in a world where there's an, another ethical system being imposed on me? You don't have to answer all those questions right <laughs> at once. Uh, but what are some of your opening thoughts about the unrest that people are having? Well, uh, rather than get into the political piece, uh, people are basically responding to where they are. Uh, they're leaning on the political side one way versus another about the vaccine or the quarantine, uh, the economy, people have lost jobs, uh, disruption, uh, limitations on going out, uh, getting around. Uh, just their life for many people has been disrupted. Uh, others had to adjust uh, what we thought would be a really nice transition for many people uh, on online. Um, now it's challenging because uh, many companies, they have more time online with their employees. Uh, because you don't have to drive here, we can start a little earlier. You're not driving home, we can have another meeting later on. Uh, plus, if they have children with the oversight of the uh, children's education, uh, plus there are other factors. So what I will share with you is that I don't want to come across simplistic, but the reality is that somehow we have to regain and maintain the peace in our heart. Because unlike other situations, this is kind of intense right now for a lot of people, more so than others, uh, but life in general can be intense at seasons, at times. And we have to really take stock and my peace, is my peace being drained? Am I losing my peace? How am I talking to people? And how am I sleeping? Uh, how am I getting along? Am I quick and am I I'm irritable? Uh, because peace is huge to maintain. Jesus made it very clear. Uh, he says, my peace I give unto you. Not the peace that the world gives. The world gives and takes away. And so I want to encourage you uh, to look for solutions, see God, and, and, and manage and monitor, or maybe ask your close friends, your loved ones, how am I doing? Am I too irritable? Am I snappy? Sometimes we know it. We just don't talk much about it. I'm sorry. Apologize. Uh, these are things that we should consider. But in particular, it's the word of God that we have to trust, uh, regain our peace. When we don't have peace, we do not make good decisions. We can walk in wisdom. Wisdom is described in the female gender in Proverbs. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all of her paths are peace. And so if we don't have the peace, God's speaking, but he's only speaking in an environment of peace where you can hear him. Because what's happening, the outside influences is overshadowing the still small voice of God's voice in peace. And so even though there are real concerns, um, and I'm not making it, I'm making it trite, but I want to encourage you. That's why time in your devotion, uh, with all the schedules, you may schedule time more for, for just rest time, sleep time, exercise. Uh, I was talking to one uh, elderly minister that I know. Uh, he's improved his health. He just started doing uh, jogging and, and, and exercise right there in, in, in his house. Um, and, and, and improving his, his eating habits. And he feels good, and so he's more peaceful, he's more hopeful. So hopefulness is also a key piece uh, for having peace in your life. Uh, if you think, you're, you think, oh, when is gonna be over with this pandemic, and you know, then you don't, you're not hopeful. You can begin to be hopeful right now. Maybe start writing things down, and maybe God's giving you something to write down, a journal, or share with your children, and you minister to other people. Begin to look at what can you do that's going to, you're looking forward to a future day, tomorrow, this week. If you don't have that, my friend, it's not going to be good. And all it takes is something on the outside, what you hear on television, what you hear another person you know passed away. Uh, it can rob you of what little piece you have left. So I want to encourage you and give it other believers that can support you in this area. Uh, be around people that are more peaceful than those who are not. That's helpful as well. I guard myself in those areas. Uh, whether it's, you know, who, no matter who it is, I try not to allow people 
to rob me of my peace. So, Bishop, that was really good. I, I was listening, and I think what I took away from it was that conflict has the same anatomy, whether mm -hmm. it's small or large. Yes. And that the way you address conflict is not different because it's on a massive scale, and that you can come back to the fun fundamentals. And so, what I think about, I mean, I, I know I use a lot of sports analogies when I talk, but it, I watch it a lot, so it comes to mind. But I think about, for example, I hear sometimes professional sports analysis analysts looking at football, and they're they're saying that guy didn't make a tackle. Come on, you learned that in Pop Warner. <laughs> you, I don't care how much they pay in you, you should at least know how to do a tackle, right? <laughs> and so there's like these basic things that you learn at the lower levels of the sport that you still have to maintain. Just because you're a professional on a bigger stage doesn't mean those things aren't in place. And so what I took from it is that, so step one, I think, is make sure we're practicing the fundamentals, That's that it. we're staying in the things that we know offer peace, like the word, yes. that we go back to that on a daily basis, our prayer life, uh, the way we're engaged with Christian community, even though it's distance. But those are things that I think people can, can dismiss in a time of crisis. They can throw that off because they feel they don't have time right. to, to focus on it. So that's, that's really good. Yeah, and it's really good you said that about the fundamentals. Even the word, uh, if we don't take time to meditate on it, to think about it, even a, one verse about peace, and let it go into our heart, then it's like when we talk that way, it's kind of like, I know that, I know that. But do you really know what it's saying and, what it's in, and the value of peace? When they start getting better, deeper understanding, they'll, they'll go and, and, yes, I need to hear this. Sometimes it's relaxing, soft music. Uh, in fact, it was the other night, I just put on some, some music and, and uh, piano playing and a little water sound behind just to relax. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was doing some reading. Uh, it's like it's that, that soothes me and makes me more peaceful, relaxed. I like, I like the way it sounds. Things like that people can do. But the Word of God, there's power in that. Mm -hmm. And so when we start thinking about peace and what the Scripture talks about peace, it helps us deal with any situation, whether it's small or great, or just a um, misunderstanding when you're buying food. It's not what I ordered. I got to go. And you said it was ready, and, and you left out something. That can be very challenging. Now, I have another question. And I, th I think, I don't know if I got explicit questions about this, but I do think it's on people's minds. I, I think this is a season where people are experiencing death yeah. at levels that they never have. I mean, even people who work in the medical professional profession who are used to death, yes. um, they're being burnt out. Uh, unless you've been in a war zone or you've been involved in, in gang activity. Um, uh, people in those, maybe in those contexts have seen death on a regular basis, but the average person hasn't. And so how mm. are you, first of all, tell us how you're processing that personally. And I'll bring up as well, you know, Apostle Price, he passed away not too long ago, a mentor of yours, a father figure for you. Yeah. Uh, so maybe we start there. How did you process that with his passing? And, you know, how does that speak to how you process it generally and how other people may process the reality of death today? Well, Apostle Price, being a spiritual father, uh, we went there when we were young in the 20s. Uh, he, um, he married my wife and I. He, he dedicated you. Uh, he just was a major part of our life throughout the years. So because I was aware he was physically challenged, we were praying for him. Uh, I know he was older. Uh, we heard that it was kind of touch and go for, for a little bit. Uh, we also heard that uh, he had, in fact, died and came back 10 minutes later something like that a couple of times. Uh, it was challenging. And so we're hopeful that he would come out of it. Uh, but we do know that, you know, one day he's going to pass. And uh, I'm sure he's fighting to live longer. But I believe he went on his own terms, uh, that he decided just to go, especially in those kind of interactions back and forth. Um, but it, I think what helps us deal with it and how I deal with it is reality of, of death. Uh, because... Death is, is really more for us. It's not so much a, a, a end, it's a transition. We're alive, born again now. And when we understand when the loved one or someone you know dies, uh, they're not in that body, they have a new body right now. They're with Jesus. And letting that really get into our heart. It doesn't mean we don't care about them, we don't miss them, uh, the time we spend with them. But our loved ones who die in Christ, they're doing good. <laughs> they're really doing good. It's not a bad thing to them. It's really more us. And I think about Jesus. It may come across a little callous, but he said, let the dead bury the dead because he's so focused on moving forward. So partly it's us, us Christians to, after we mourn, then it's time to move forward. It doesn't mean you don't, you don't remember them, and, you know, you, but you don't need to be trying to talk to them. 
Uh, some people, are, 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 they, they get that experience, and devil's trying to come in and get us to stay in a space. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And sometimes people start talking. My, my, my mother visited me. No, she didn't. She went to be with the Lord. She didn't. Those are familiar spirits. And sometimes people don't understand that. They're, they're hungry for not letting them go. And they open the door for the enemy. So when we have purpose and they understand they live a good life, maybe their life is cut short. Okay, but they're with Jesus right now. Or maybe a loved one that did not know Christ, the best knowledge you have. That's sad. Now, what are you going to do so the next relative, the next loved one, you make sure that you do all you can that they know Christ? To me, that's how we, live, we should live this life. We can't live in regret, live in remorse, live in the past. So I encourage people to deal with the reality, and in particular, the example of, about uh, Solomon. No, David, excuse me, David. Uh, when the baby died, the one he had out of wedlock, uh, he wanted praying the baby to live, and then he was mourning, and then after the baby died, he took a bath and shaved and ate, and uh, his servants were kind of surprised. And so he said, they were kind of shocked. Are you okay? What's going on? And basically what he said is that he can't come back, but I can go see him. I'll be with him one day. And so that's really how we should see it. Uh, but I'm not discounting the emotions and God gives us emotions, but we cannot live there. The Bible is very clear. Cursed is the man that trusts in flesh. And our emotions aren't, aren't the true way of how we should always operate, make decisions. It's the inward man. Be more inward mind conscious. What is your spirit telling you? Uh, so, um, you know, to help people that, you know, things happen, these are very real situations. But that's why we're a Bible teaching church to help people grow in their own walk. And it may be difficult today, but maybe a year from now, they're better at it, no problem. But it's a growth opportunity and to, uh, and to comfort others. See, if I'm, if I'm all tore up, who can I comfort? And so it's that kind of opportunity that we have to, to move on in life. Plus the opportunity is to just get the job done in life uh, if we get overwhelmed. And so I would be, I, what I would do is be aware of our loved ones and our friends. Some of them are in a place that's not good. We can reach out to them and encourage them. And that's important. They may not be aware of where they are. They're overwhelmed. And so we can help one another in those, in those cases. Or you know, we can reach out to others. So, uh, yeah, this, it's a challenging time for a lot of people. Especially if it's financially challenged, you have income, and maybe you may be, uh, not, maybe you haven't paid rent in a while. Now your landlord is struggling; he's mad or she's mad, and now you want to get you out, and and those things like that. It's very real to people, and my heart goes out to them. Uh, but as believers, God has a way. We look at the examples in, in the Old Testament. The widow had nothing. I'm going to eat, and me and my son are going to die. God sent a prophet to her to help her already. Who's there to help me, Lord God? Cry out to God, what should I do now? And it's that kind of faith, and, and again, reviewing the scriptures like that, he's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. So on a practical side, uh, that's how I look at it. So my, my spiritual father, uh, Apostle Price, I, I think about his memories. I, I, I've been talking about it, thinking about it a lot. How he's been a blessing to us, an example, and a man of integrity, a man that taught the word, and a man that loved his wife. I mean, really, he was the best in the first major example I saw in a preacher up close that loved his wife, loved his children, and man of excellence and represented well. He was not chasing the women in the choir or in the church. And so because of that, he had the standard that said, wow. So I, I, I'm happy for him. I'm happy for his legacy. And I want to continue to, to uh, honor his legacy. That's very insightful. I mean, I like what you brought up about keeping just remembering our hope in Christ and the, the line you said about David is like, well, he can't come to you, but I can come to him and that we can definitely look forward to that. Um, I, I, I'm also thinking about people who, so they might say, they, they might agree with you and say, yes, that that's true. Uh, and, and, and that may happen with respect to, you know, a death here at certain times. Some of the things that people are asking is like the, the, the amount of it. So it's the deaths, then it's the people taking care of loved ones at the same time, people who may die or may not die, um, people taking care of their parents who are elderly, uh, and the, it's, it becomes something that they cannot simply dismiss practically because it's just all around them. So tell us more about that process 
Um, we, we all get to a point, I think, at some point to be in a healthier place when we've experienced death or tragedy. But how are people processing their emotions in the moment, in the thick of an intense situation with respect to illness or, or death? Well, you bring up a good point. Uh, I, I know there are people out there that are feeling overwhelmed in a number of areas in their life. And so this is where they can either reach out. Some people are either timid or don't feel comfortable to reach out for help. Uh, and it could be that's part of it. But then we, the part, being part of the broader Christian community, we should be checking on people. One of the things that my wife and I, my mom and I, uh, your mom and my wife, uh, operate the Spirit of God will bring people's names to us. How so and so? She said, I don't know, I need to, we should give them a call. She'll call or I'll call or we'll ask one of the leaders call and we find out it's a good timing. Mm -hmm. So part of it, God puts people in our heart, it's just a thought, their name, check on them. And so we, even though we're in need, let me check on someone else. And, and if I can't help meet that need, I can ask someone else in the community, church, Christian community, to reach out. It could be just a neighbor a neighbor down the street who may not be involved in a local church, check on them. You know, the Bible says when you do good, good comes back unto you, okay? And so, uh, again, going back to the biblical principles, the church community is important. Some people may not have been engaged and stay connected like they used to because of just the stuff on their plate. Uh, so the rest of us should be thinking about one another and reaching out, or they can reach out for help and say, you know what, uh, I got some major challenges, can you help me? Uh, if we don't know, we can't respond accordingly. But for their own personal situation, at the end of the day, we can cry out to God. God, it, maybe it's just God, help me. He's alive and well, and he is moved by the feelings of our infirmities, our weaknesses. That's the emotional and all that. And if we cry out to God, humble ourselves, humble ourselves, you know, we Americans aren't used to humbling ourselves. You know, we want to be on top. We want to be in control. We want to, be, you know, all that. We want to be winners. But sometimes we're not winning, Josh. We're not winning. And we're in bad shape. And God, help me. Jesus, help me. And that is a good word for people. Because, you know, the man, you know, will cry out to Jesus, Jesus, have mercy upon me. Son of David, have mercy upon me. If they do that, believe me, God would touch somebody. Maybe it's a neighbor or someone. And so I think that at the end of the day, it's the help of God. If, if it's beyond what we can do in our own, in our own community, at those spots, only God can help us. And we cry out to him. He has a way of responding. I like what you said about the, the conversation piece. I mean, you, you talked about you know, people reaching out for help and the church reaching out to people who think, think might need help. But when I, took, when I listened to that, I thought about just the power of conversation and having an opportunity to just talk about it with people. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of things can't be resolved instantaneously, but, but having the opportunity to have those conversations. And I think that in this quarantine, we've had to be creative about it because those natural interactions with people aren't happening, but just to lean into those conversations, uh, just in terms of talking about it, processing it. I know sometimes when I'm experiencing something that is overwhelming, talking about it with somebody actually helps even if some of the material things haven't changed. And right. so, so a couple of things I'm taking away. So first, the <laughs> one about the, the go back to the fundamentals, yeah. right? And in, in time of peace, in a, in a time where you're looking for peace, go back to the fundamentals of the faith. Yes. Make sure we're doing that. And two, uh, let's make sure we're connecting with people. And we might have to be innovative, but to have those conversations. And I think I'm having more old-fashioned phone calls these days uh, because of that. So I, I really like that, that approach. So, so let, me, let, me, let me ask you another question. Again, another aspect of it was this reality of the end times. And <laughs> people are asking about that. There were, you know, is the vaccine the mark of the beast? <laughs> and you know, is the Antichrist going to come? And a person was asking a question about Israel. They were saying, well, what, when we look at Israel, how should that shape the way we think about the end times? So what are your thoughts about thinking about our situation and thinking about the prospect of this being closer to the end than we could possibly imagine. Definitely, I believe it's close, getting close to the end time, or in the end time, but close to the end, uh, as you described. Um, whether the vaccine is, I don't think it's the mark of the beast, because the Bible is very clear, it's 666. Um, and, but it, it may have some other 
you know, other ways of how that can happen because people are becoming comfortable uh, on, a, on a national level to have whether it's a vaccine or a mark or something. And um, so, uh, but, the, but when the Antichrist is revealed, my understanding in, in the scriptures, the rapture has taken place. Mm. And so um, my, when I look at scripture, be busy about his business until he comes. Mm. And so that's reaching people for Christ. That's, that's, the Bible says, if you therefore have opportunity, let us do good unto all men, but especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Going back to our early discussion about those that are challenged and help and how we can respond to one another. But there's a world out there that doesn't know Christ. And so uh, regarding the vaccine and things like that, uh, rather than to be concerned, overly concerned about it, be about our father's business. There's some nephews and nieces. Mm. I'm, I'm calling some of my nieces or, or our father, their parent called me. I said, have her call me. I mm. talked to one the other day. Okay, this encouragement. I, call, I talked to my brother. I really, my youngest brother. I really talked to him a lot because, you know, he's kind of a little different, but I, I, I talked with him today. Encourage him. It's powerful. Restore relationship and acquaintances because mm. I'm busy and I always, you know, and he's kind of grumpy a little bit sometimes. <laughs> but anyway, uh, but I, even though he, he's like cursing every other word, mm. I'm just talking with him. I'm not getting offended by it. Mm. And I'm encouraging, loving him. He started laughing and so forth because he's in a place in his life mm. that, that he needs somebody. And so uh, I share that is that that should be the mission because when the rapture happens, we're out of here. Mm. And, and then it's going to be a dramatic change. So I believe the, the setup, uh, the mentality of the world and what America is kind of helping to make that happen uh, in other countries uh, is set up for the Antichrist big time, mm. hugely. And so rather than say, is it time, time? Jesus says, in other words, unpack your bags, mm. be about your father's business, and then when he comes, you know, you don't have to be, is it okay? You'd be caught up mm. in a twinkling of an eye, in a moment. And so, so it takes care of itself. Mm. It's going to be a shout, and we'll hear it, and we'll, we'll be in, meet him in the sky. Mm. So that's, that's really good. I, I think, so what I take away from that is, you know, we, as we look at the end times and things that in our minds are things we can't control, let's focus on the things that we can control. And not just that we control that, what God is asking us to do, the internal things. Yes. And to put our attention to the things that will last forever, as opposed to being worrying about things that have a temporal, they have a shelf life, uh, because this, 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 won't, this won't last forever. That, that's really good, because we have people all around us that have needs. Yeah. And you know, I know that I've said in the past that you know some people are the pr pr prospect of the Lord Jesus, come quickly, get me out of here. <laughs> But we really should be praying. I think about when Abraham was praying about Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm. And he said, is there any way, Lord, Come you on. cannot destroy Sodom? Yeah. I mean, maybe it was in part because his nephew lived there. <laughs> but it was like, is there any way? Is there, how many righteous people need to be there? Come and on. it's like we have family and friends and people in our circle who don't know Jesus, who don't know him like we know him. And it's like, Lord, can you hold off a little bit until yeah. they come to Jesus, and so I really, I really like, I really like that perspective. I want to make see if we have enough time. Oh, we, we're almost out of time here, so maybe <laughs> we'll catch it uh, on the next one. Um, but um, this is great. So I'm gonna re rehearse the last three things you said. So we talked about one having going. If we want to address, if we want to have peace in this world today, go back to the fundamentals of the faith. Make sure we're having a daily a diet of Jesus yeah. in the Word, in worship, in prayer, and doing the things we know to do. Number two. Let's be proactive about having conversations. We don't have to deal with the stress of life by ourselves. We have Jesus, but we also have each other, and yeah. God has designed us to be in community. And that may, we have, may have to be innovative in quarantine, but pick up the phone and just say, hey, can I talk to you and just process my week? <laughs> so there's that. And then thirdly, put our fo and as we look at the end times, let's put our focus on the eternal things that we can do now yeah. instead of the temporal things that are uncertain. There are things that we can do to minister to people and to make sure that when Jesus does come, we, are, we have enlisted our community into the kingdom. So yes. very powerful. Thank you, Bishop, for those, for those insights. And I'm going to give you an opportunity to just say some things to our audience in terms of how they can connect with, with us, the church, and the kingdom. Well, I would like to encourage you to think about what we share today. The very real, and I'm sure you're experiencing some level of challenge, uh, frustration, disappointment, and possibly opportunity. But you have a tremendous opportunity right now to receive Christ. And I would like to lead you in a very simple prayer to accept Christ in your life. 
or recommit your life to Christ. He's there waiting for you. And it's time is to be more serious about your walk if you already have accepted Christ to get more serious and be about your Father's business. So repeat after me, please. Dear Father God, I come to you just as I am. I believe in my heart and I say with my mouth that Jesus Christ is now my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul and filling me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that, we'd like you to contact us. There's a text on the screen. You'll be able to see the text, that number, and let us know you'd like to get connected. And we'd like to help you progress in your life. We don't want this to be kind of one and done ex connection or experience. A church is a community, as we talked about earlier, and we all need community. At some time or another, we all need someone else. And the church is an opportunity to do that. Just like families are not perfect, churches are not perfect. But there are people who are striving to grow in God and love one another and do better. And I believe you'll be a nice asset even to this community here at Zoe Christian Fellowship. So again, thank you for watching. We appreciate you, and uh, we'll see you later. Thank you for joining us.